Welcome faculty, staff, students, and alumni to the 2020 Columbia Nursing State of the School Address. We, like every organization everywhere, are in a different place than we were a year ago. The world as we knew it has changed dramatically. The experiences of this past year as we face the twin pandemics of COVID and racism changed us as a school, as a community, and as individuals. So I wanna to begin today by thanking every one of you for your contributions to this extraordinary year. A year ago, we were planning to celebrate 2020's landmark designation by WHO as the year of the nurse and the midwife. But of course, 2020 turned into a landmark year in other ways. COVID-19 has tested those in the healthcare front lines, especially nurses, like nothing in my living memory. At the same time, our nation has faced a reawakened reckoning with racism. Given all that, the bravery and commitment we witnessed this year has been overwhelming. In the early days of the pandemic, we knew we needed to act quickly to safeguard our community, to ensure that we'd be able to continue to teach students and to find ways to ease the burden of healthcare workers and to serve patients in any way we could on and off the front lines. The efforts our school has made, faculty, staff, and students alike, has been nothing short of outstanding. We have had many challenges to navigate so that we could continue teaching and working. And at every turn, we've addressed these challenges collaboratively. We've come together as a school to find solutions. We've been collegial, supportive, and innovative. One of the innovations I'm most proud of is when we anticipated the strain the pandemic's first surge would put on hospitals and nurses. And we joined forces with New York Presbyterian to give nursing students opportunities to serve and learn. They did everything from conducting temperature screenings at the hospital entrances to delivering direct patient care under supervision. This innovative partnership not only eased the burden on fellow nurses, but it also showed our students what it means to be a nurse, to serve, and to work with the best. I'm so proud of what our faculty and students accomplished through this partnership. I'm equally proud of our renewed focus on addressing the systemic wrongs that plague people of color. We know that there are changes we need to make as a school to do our part to root out injustice. Since the tragic killing of George Floyd last spring caught the nation's attention, we have redoubled our efforts as individuals and as an institution to further the important work of anti-racism. I'm encouraged by your engagement and honesty as we have come together as a school and with our colleagues across CUIMC to deepen our longstanding commitment to this important work that we're doing on so many levels through our Office of Diversity and Cultural Affairs and through collaborations with CUIMC Anti-Racism Committee and its six working groups. I'd like to mention just a few of the many actions we've accomplished in this topic in, during 2020. We've recently acknowledged that our land stands on an ancestral land stolen several centuries ago from the Lenape tribe. And we've put in place ways to honor the Lenape in perpetuity. We've launched a very successful diversity book club. We've established a task force that is assembling a collection of anti-racism resources. We've established a center for research on people of color, which recently began an anti-racism speaker series. We added a core course on anti-racism to the MDE curriculum. We implemented a racial literacy development series that is now required for all full-time faculty. We established a working group that is focused on recruiting and retaining a diverse workforce. Our student council has established a racial justice committee that has been engaged in all these efforts. And that's just a taste of how we're working to dismantle our country's tragic legacy of structural racism. And now I'd like to introduce the school senior leaders. The quality of every aspect of our school is a reflection of the quality of their leadership. Betsy Corwin, Vice Dean of Strategic and Innovative Research. Reva Feinstein, Associate Dean for Development and Alumni Relations. Stephen Ferreira, Associate Dean for Clinical Affairs. 
Judy Honig, Vice Dean for Academic Affairs, Tonda Hughes, Associate Dean for Global Health, Linda Muscat Rim, Associate Dean for Marketing and Strategic Communication, Rebecca Schnall, Associate Dean for Faculty Development, Vivian Taylor, Associate Dean for Diversity and Cultural Affairs, Jason Wright, Vice Dean for Finance and Administration, and Judy Wolf, Associate Dean for Student Affairs. I'd also like to acknowledge our esteemed faculty and our incredibly and talented staff who collectively make us the success we are today. Thank you all for your dedication. And a special nod out to our students, our reason for being, you all are exceptional. And finally, to our alumni, I extend my thanks for your commitment and support. We truly appreciate you. And next, I'd like to share some of 2020's accomplishments and honors that make me very proud of Columbia Nursing. This is by no means an exhaustive list that would take up the entire hour, but it's a brief selection. Nine Columbia Nursing faculty and alums were inducted as fellows into the American Academy of Nursing. One faculty member was inducted into the National Academy of Medicine. One faculty member was inducted into the Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing, International Nurse Researcher Hall of Fame. Three faculty members were inducted into the New York Academy of Medicine. We ranked fourth among schools of nursing nationwide in NIH funding. Our DMP program was ranked first in the nation by US News and World Report. Dean Emeritus Bobby Berkowitz was named a living legend by the American Academy of Nursing. She joins, of course, Elaine Larson in holding this distinction. And finally, Columbia Nursing jointly with our NYP Hospital Partnership was awarded the 2020 American Association of Colleges of Nursing New Era for Academic Nursing Award. We are honored for the academic practice collaborations between our institutions and most notably linking to improve nursing knowledge or the LINK program. And now I'd like to take you through the state of the school in research. Our national standing in terms of NIH funding demonstrates our school's leadership among our peers. In 2020, our faculty were highly productive, holding 56 active research, training, and career development grants and bringing in $14.8 million in federal and non-federal funds. And our fourth place national ranking in NIH grants is up 16 places from just five years ago. This is truly a testament to the commitment, innovation, and tenacity of our faculty, postdocs, doctoral students, and staff, including our grants management office. We couldn't have achieved this success without them. Our research faculty have taken an active role in supporting proposals focused on reducing COVID spread and impact. A recently funded proposal is a two-year award for over 1.2 million aimed at reducing COVID-related disparities with culturally congruent infographics and other interventions. Other faculty have also shared their expertise on ethical issues surrounding palliative care and end of life in nursing homes affected by COVID. We continue to lead in research areas of health equity, the elimination of health disparities and cardiovascular disease, HIV prevention and treatment, palliative care, infectious diseases even beyond COVID, and policy initiatives related to these topics. At the same time, we're expanding our research in genetics, epigenetics, metagenome, and maternal and child health. And we're exploring interactions among these areas to take a holistic approach to understanding and ultimately to helping eliminate health inequities experienced by underrepresented groups. We've surged to the forefront as leaders in LGBTQ research and recently launched a new center for research on people of color. We're also applying computer intelligence to improve patient outcomes and adding omics to our toolbox to advance ways of knowing. We also continue through the LINK program to change the way we deliver patient care. We currently have faculty with joint appointments at Hassensack Meridian Health, New York Presbyterian, the Hospital for Special Surgery, and our own flagship clinic, the Columbia Doctors Nurse Practitioner Group. In our education, 
Thanks to our amazing faculty, staff, students, and leadership team, all of our academic programs continued during this unprecedented year. I'm thrilled to report that every student graduated on time. This is an amazing feat. What's more, our certification pass rates are nearly 100%, and the NCLEX pass rate so far is 97%. I'm very proud of our faculty and our students for their fortitude in the face of the 2020 challenges. As you know, when the pandemic consumed New York City in March, the school moved instantly into delivering remote education. And we've remained predominantly online since then. Students and faculty had to adapt on the fly. Technology upgrades, new programs, and new equipment were needed immediately. Faculty training in the online pedagogy began without delay. Students' clinical experiences have expanded to include telemedicine, curbside care, and the care of COVID patients augmented with virtual simulation activities. I'd like to acknowledge the critical role that our Sim Center has played all during this time. We were able to pivot our simulation activity to virtual simulation platforms tailored to specific program needs. At the onset of the pandemic, a COVID-wide task force, including represent, representatives from the simulation center, developed safety guidelines for students to return to campus, addressing the use of PPE, physical distance, room capacity, and cleaning guidelines. The simulation team also mobilized quickly to develop simulation sessions to prepare the OR nurses at NYP to be deployed on COVID units throughout the hospital and also to train our students to serve as NYP nurse techs. And finally, through our simulation center, we donated hundreds of N95 masks, hand sanitizers, surgical masks and gowns, anesthesia machines, plus our simulations ventilator. Simulation has improved our curriculum beyond the pandemic with the use of extended reality and standardized patients to teach students about the needs of LGBTQ patients. Our simulation center was also awarded a $1.8 million grant by the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality to show how simulation can improve infection prevention and patient safety. And now for some program specific academic updates. Our new open program, OPEN stands for Online Prerequisites for Entry into Nursing, allows non-nurses to take science prerequisites needed to apply to nursing and other health profession schools. OPEN courses are offered online at a discount tuition, giving individuals from all walks of life, undergraduates, parents, working adults, a chance to acquire the credits they need to enter into healthcare. Looking ahead, Two new programs are currently being reviewed by the university, a certificate in professional achievement in transgender healthcare for nurse practitioners, the first of its kind, a non-degree course to give nurse practitioners the specialized knowledge and skills to care for trans people. Also, a certificate in professional achievement in palliative care for advanced practice will be a four credit non-degree program for nurses and nurse practitioners in another growing field global health. Now more than ever, we share a bond with nurses and other healthcare providers around the world as our counterparts everywhere serve on the front lines of the pandemic. Our Pan American Health Organization, WHO Collaborating Center for Advanced Nursing Practice, joined with other collaborating centers to address the pandemic through best practices, research, and innovation in nursing education. One of the most important pandemic innovations was our circle of care program, which provides a chance for nurse clinicians and students to process, reflect on, and acknowledge their experiences and minimize the effects of any trauma they experience. Since the start of the pandemic, 77 circles of care sessions have been led by our global team in collaboration with many members of our leadership and faculty. Although in-person international opportunities are currently paused, we create virtual projects so students can engage with our global partners and learn about other healthcare systems and challenges COVID presents worldwide. And finally, thanks to awards from President Bollinger's Global Innovation Fund and the Larson Global Development Fund, we are developing new international scholarly 
and research activities in Haiti and Malawi. In our faculty practice, the nurse practitioner group, they also took on a different shape this year to meet COVID's demands. The first change took place early on when we collaborated with CUIMC to transform the nurse practitioner group's Washington Heights location into a COVID-19 cough and fever clinic, the only on-campus clinic of its kind, and it was able to offset patient intake at nearby hospitals. The practice also took part in two important research trials. One conducted in collaboration with CUIMC screened patients recovering from COVID for antibodies. The other study was designed to test the so-called cough trap. The cough trap, less challenging than the nasal swab, merely requires patients to cough into a device which catches their sputum. The study's findings were submitted to the New England Journal of Medicine and Columbia has licensed that test to a commercial partner. The practice has also been more essential than ever before for the homebound elderly in Upper Manhattan who rely on our house call initiatives. Also, although not surprising, the telehealth visits have increased tenfold over last year. The practice also made advances unrelated to the pandemic. One included increasing the number of clinical placements for our nurse practitioner students. It also was being used to integrate our research and practice priorities, for example, our Center for Improving Palliative Care for Vulnerable Adults with Multiple Chronic Conditions funded a pilot study in which our clinic helps explore the palliative care needs of the homebound and ambulatory patients with multiple chronic conditions. This is just one of many ways we align our research expertise with the clinical needs of the underserved patients. In fact, our vision for the practice has always been to provide care to the underserved populations, and we have done a good job in fulfilling that vision, particularly in establishing the practice as the first in Upper Manhattan to offer a full range of LGBTQ specific services. And finally, I'm thrilled to announce that we received the patient centered medical home recognition from the National Committee for Quality Assurance. And now our students. I get so excited about our wonderful students because they are truly our legacy. During this global pandemic, we have seen interest in our programs rise dramatically. Applications to the 2021 MDE program increased 30% over last year, 56% since 2018. I already mentioned the open program offering non-nursing courses needed to apply to nursing school. Well, we enrolled 114 students during the pilot year and interest continues to grow. We've also seen an expansion in our partnership with NYP, enrolling our largest cohort yet up 35% over 2019 in the master's program in advanced clinical management and leadership. In 2020, we graduated 343 students from our MDE, MS, DMP and PhD programs. And we enrolled 323 new MDE, MSN anesthesia, MS clinical nurse management and doctoral students. We awarded over $10.2 million in student scholarships this year, including 4.7 million to the entering MDE cohort. Some students received as much as $100,000 toward their Columbia nursing education, awards that keep us competitive with other institutions. And finally, our students have shown great resilience, learning in a now largely virtual world. In the meantime, our student leaders have continued to serve as peer mentors, student organization board members, and student council members, helping to create programs and initiatives that benefit all students. They truly embody the Columbia nursing spirit. In conclusion, None of us could have imagined a year ago what the state of the school would be like at this point. It has been an incredible year. We faced profound challenges, came together to address those challenges and emerged even stronger than ever. Many thanks to you all, faculty, staff, students, and our NYP colleagues for carrying us through. Thank you, stay safe, be well, and have a very happy holiday season.